Hello, everyone. Good evening. Dr. Incompetent here. Let's try this again. And we're going to play the Stanley Parable. This is my first time ever playing the game, ever booting it up, giving it a shot. And it's wonderful to see you all, Alex, Meat Boy, Pizza. Eric, good evening, everyone. So this is a game that has been um, recommended, or a good evening, good to see you, by Nick Man for a while. And others have um, been recommending it too. Okay, Alex, well, at least it's somewhat better. And so I'm excited to give this a shot. Like, the idea basically is that this is... All I know is from the Steam page, which says it's a kind of a meta game exploration game like and you can already tell that that seems to be the case uh given that i'm playing the stanley parable and then on the computer screen is the stanley parable and then there's like this infinite loop of computers playing the game that i'm playing the game so you get this idea of um you know wild kind of recursiveness that evokes perhaps i don't know finnegan's wake or some kind of infinite story and i i'm ready for the ride let's dive in and see what this is all about so we're going to begin the game the end is never the end is never the end is loading all right that's a good start you know when you boot up a game and it tells you that there's never going to be an end. That's, that's something else. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Oh, great. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. He was so happy. That's great. It's good to be and happy. And one day, something very peculiar happened. Uh-oh. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. Uh-oh. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Oh my. Okay, one moment. Let me turn up the game audio. Dragon Panda, Azure fan. Hello, good evening, everybody. Let me know. Hopefully this will make uh, the game a bit more audible for you. Okay. So, I'm looking around. Uh, actually, let me... I have to change the... Uh, this is my own fault. But I have to invert the mouse. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Awesome. Well, I hear nothing but good things. So, I'm a corporate guy by the name of Stanley, and let's just take a look around our office. That's fantastic, Dragon. I'm doing great. It is 1124, I suppose, and let's take a look. Yep, we've got, like, evil fluorescent light, but they don't seem to be working, and I am just being illuminated by this kind of desk lamp on top of these filing cabinets that I've got. Now, I have a pretty rocking, like, horseshoe-shaped desk. This is enormous for one person. There's massive cables on the ground. I have these, this, like, workflow output 
organizing boxes that are in primary colors. You don't like to see that. A pencil sharpener. And otherwise, no decoration except this kind of, you know, lackluster photograph of a mountain road, I suppose, in, 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 you know, going through a meadow. Uh, so I really like the fact that when I look at my computer, it's this ancient, like this is very reminiscent of old computers to me, like a 386, 486 kind of uh, old school computer that matches the rest of the decor in this office. And I have a mug that says, I hate Mondays, I'm assuming, which is just hilarious corporate affair, right? Now, the rest of the office is lit up and the fluorescent lights are a-booming. By the way, notice I have no window in my office. I do have a little yellow box up here. Now, I don't know what any of the controls do. I don't know if I'm meant to interact with anything, but apparently no one is at work. I've got a message on my phone and I, don't, I can't really use it. Can I use my computer? No. I don't know what the controls are, but uh, just kind of pushing some things. Nothing's happening. So I'm going to leave. I'm going to go look for people. All right. And here's my good office mate, employee 428. Hey, hey, Ace. Good evening. Good to see you. I know. I think Weird is going to cover it. And I'm down for just a completely off the beaten path game. But this kind of a narrative mind messing game... Uh, with this many positive reviews, just seems like such a seminal work of art that I want to try it. All right, and nope, can't get in the door. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Need to go to the meeting room. All right. By the way, the narrator for this game is awesome. He has like this really uh, professional, jovial sounding voice like... Like, almost like he's telling a, a children's story, you know, kind of a narrator. It it really adds some panache. Schnez, good evening. Good to see you. Yes, I have, Ori. I love Portal 2. It's a game about listening to the narrator and silliness. Okay, awesome, Alex. Then let's do that. Let's kick back and be silly. So, here's another. We all have the same I hate Mondays uh, kind of feel. And I can turn it up, sure. I think this is a game where it's so imperative that you guys hear the narrator that I'm going to turn him up significantly and let me know if he's too loud. He's up. We got a copy machine. Looks busted. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. They aren't anywhere. The Who Farted mug, hysterical. I know. Yeah, me too, Dragon. I kind of like Mondays for that reason as well. So, I mean, in all honesty, these people have these cubicles. Okay, gr great, Schnez, thank you. But they do have windows, so they get the windows, but they don't have a closed office like I have. Oh man, look at that CRT monitor, all powered up. I turned it off. Okay, that... That isn't what I meant. <laughs> Ryder, what is up? Good evening. Oh, you got 100%. Exactly. He's probably loves Mondays. He walks in, farts in your office, and then slowly drinks from the Who Farted mug until you smell and then you just, like, are about to complain and then you look at him. He locks eyes with you, makes the finger guns, walks away. His day is complete. Oh, I do, Dragon. I so do. I remember moving them. It was much... Just an absolute nightmare moving old school CRT TVs. I just... I like work. I just hate my boss. Whoa. That's a controversial cup to have around. You don't want your boss to see that. All right. Oh, and here's like one of these just random corporate you know, motivational, inspirational scenery images, these landscapes that they give you that 
to try to fire you up. Nobody's in there. I don't even know where the break room is. But my god. Look at this. I mean, this horrible, like, beige brown carpeting with all these stains. No decorations. No personality. Yeah, you get the feel like Ori is talking about of something like Portal, right? Also, you get the sense of, uh, you know, the movie Office Space for sure is flying in my face. I also feel, just because of the corporate nature of it, um, a little bit like Control. Oh, 100%, Meat Boy. This is like the most depressing place, but somehow Stanley seems to love it. And you have this upbeat narrator trying to, like, sugarcoat what a psychological disaster this has to be working here. I like how it's not even clear. It's like Dunder Mifflin. You don't even know, like, what they're doing. Are they selling paper? Um, yep, there's like a DOS prompt. I turned it off. Okay. Little potted plant. Uh-oh. Look at that. There's like some maintenance tunnels over there. Yeah. Going outside of the corporate grid into the, uh, the maintenance tunnels definitely feels a bit like Portal. Knowing your city. There's just like random documents. Yeah, Ori, I think historically, I did see on the Steam description page that it was brought out as a a mod originally and then turned into a full game. It looks like an insurance company, 100%. God. Planning the actuarial tables. And, yep, just a random, you know, hyper-resolution picture of nature, which you'll never get in here. Looks like they're doing some repairs on the ductwork of the building in there. Alright. And let's just follow the game. The game wants me to go here. Let's go. Everything's locked. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay. So, again, I've never played this game, okay? And I know that this game is going to mess with my mind. It already is messing with my mind. So the narrator is telling me what Stanley does before Stanley does something. So we're talking about you know, destiny, um, existential choice, like, do I have any choice? Is the game directing me? Am I playing this game, or is the game playing me? These kinds of questions, of course, come up, and I, you know, um, I'm sure that this is probably a game that has, like, multiple endings, right? And I want to see what happens if I just go to the right, to the road less traveled by, right? Stanley's the kind of guy who would totally follow directions. He's actually, um, I, hey, Bostier, good evening. I know. Wouldn't that be a good one to know? Like, it's such a good, uh, like, kind of extrapolation on data of personality. You know, like, not that there's anything wrong with going either way or that really you have much of an option, right? They look pretty identical. But, um... I just, I'm going to go right and see how the narrator accommodates. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. And see, so what's going on here with the narration, at least, you know, through my interpretation, is... The reason I was going to go left is maybe because the narrator was telling me to, but also because the character that I'm playing has his own personal knowledge of where the meeting room is that I do not have access to. So I guess the game is telling me you would know which way to go and you're not really doing anything fancy by doing this. Stanley just stood there doing nothing at all. <laughs> he seems to think I have nothing better to do with my time than to sit around and describe every fascinating little detail of his inability to do anything. <laughs> this is why Stanley and I are on such good terms. Ooh, the narrator's getting snarky. The sarcasm's coming out. Yes, we are on good terms. All right. So I already didn't do what the narrator wanted. And then just standing there talking... Uh, upset him so we'll go around and um yeah god look at this room i mean what is that with the act the kind of windows to the access tunnels in the background there like are those two-way mirrors or one-way you know windows or oh man yeah 100 percent. oh here we go 
Ah, yes. Truly a room worth admiring. Yeah. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. I'm gonna drink it all in. You darn right I am. This game is hysterical. Look at this. It's like, um... The... Yes. Really, oh boy. really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. I love this. And you know what? It's What's hilarious about this whole experience is... I, I don't know if Nick At this and... point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy <laughs> and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone <laughs> left. This is so funny. He just keeps going on, like, berating me. Um, well, anyway, wh what I was going to say is, I think this... Stanley sat around oh waiting for more dialogue. But when a long time had passed and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. Oh, yes, 100%. So, let me, um, I'm going to actually pause the game, and maybe, I don't know if the game is going to do anything because I've paused it, but I don't want to, uh, I want to speak without being interrupted by this guy. I know, Meat Boy, big time. Oh, thank you, Crispy. Good evening, my friend. Thank you for the, uh, recommendations. I love the wise games, by the way. Okay. So, the point I was trying to make was... Nick Man recommended I play this game after we beat Darkest Dungeon. Number one, because he said it was pretty short, um, but also worth playing. But I don't know if he also had in mind the fact that this is a game that has a narrator with a completely memorable voice that breaks the fourth wall, that, you know, comes after you, is snarky, just like the narrator in Darkest Dungeon. Different from the narrator, the ancestor in Darkest Dungeon, but it's just this kind of, like, real vibe created by narration. Fading, good evening. All right, let's see if I can... I don't seem to be able to pick anything up. I love this recessed step right here. I mean, how many people have gotten broke in the, the lounge trying to go to the soda machine and not seeing this step down, you know, or not seeing the step up and just, you know, completely face planted or wiped out in the, in the break room here? Give me a drink. All right, no drinks. It's like they could have easily, and I mean easily made the rest of the office building at least this pleasing, you know, compared to this brown. I mean, the the choice in, you know, I'm not saying that this is, like, super great, but it's so much better on the eyes with these wall color and floor color than this. But at last, he'd had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. All right, buddy. All right, buddy. We'll take the first open door on our left. I can't wait. I'm going to ruin this guy. He wants me to go this way. I'm going to just break him. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, Schnez, like, then you don't have to go all out. Oh, wow. Do not lie. If you are lying right now, <laughs> stop. What? What is this supposed to mean? Caution? Yeah, Elden Ring is fantastic, Crispy. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. I know. I wasn't fired years ago. Wow, look at this kind of, like, drafting table. This looks pretty sweet. It's got a calculator. And, oh man, this is what I'm talking about. This is where uh, Ori is mentioning Portal. Like, this giant factory... You know, um, do not jump from the cargo lift when the lift is in motion. Will cause death. God, that warning sign is awesome. Uh, I can't go out there. Ah, yes, happy early Halloween, my friend. The candy is already flowing. I'm going down here. I can't wait to see this. Oh my god, look how big this place is. What in god's name? Look at these lights that they've hung from the ceiling. To what end? Can you imagine sitting in this rolling office chair right there? I guess you have your coffee cup placed over there. You need a key card to get in there. I can't. I guess I could die if I wanted to just 
you know, expire. Wow. I mean, this, this kind of an, a building gives me such vertigo, like, it's just too big with too many cardboard boxes. I should jump, indeed. I think it's worth jumping just to see, like... Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot oh, here. Oh, I'm moving. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. Her? Do I have a, a co-worker that I'm in love with? This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. Uh, She's been waiting. Man, this is getting creepier by the moment here. Huh. Okay, can't go that way. What's in here? Alright. Dark hallway. This looks good. Oh god, it closed. Oh boy. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Fine, fine. I could go unplug the phone. How about that? As Stanley picked up the phone, a white light engulfed him, filling him not just with radiance, but with hope. Hope for a life reunited one... Wait. Oh, goodness. Stanley, did you just unplug the phone? I did. No, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. No, it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. <laughs> How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. Oh it's boy. as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? I didn't well, grasp it. Well, I won't it. have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional video. Oh boy. Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Stephen has a choice. He could spend years helping improve the quality of life for citizens of impoverished third world nations. Or he could systematically set fire to every orphan living in a 30 kilometer radius of his house. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, <laughs> in all likelihood, that person is not real. <laughs> Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, My goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. Yeah, a back sack and crack, okay. Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Oh, my. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. 
Do you make more than eight? Less? Zero. And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, I'm curious. just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant, <laughs> and the feeling should subside. It does. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Okay, great. Thank you. Oh, my God. Ah, oh. Welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. It has. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision-making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. So, this game is so funny. It's such an interesting um, conversation about games, narratives, your role as the player, um, and, you know, what it means to control an avatar, what it means to, you know make pseudo choices in the game world perhaps and and i like it a lot and going on kind of what crispy's talking about with aliens what it reminds me personally of is there's a philip k dick novel that's called the martian time slip i believe and in that story something similar happens with the erosion of reality and, and there's a portion in the book and keep in mind this is a book that's like written in the 1950s um you know before computers and the internet and all that stuff and you know the guy is breaking the the narrative or he's breaking the wall of reality and he goes to a vending machine and he buys something and it's like what comes out is a piece of paper that says like bottle you know like a soda or something like that like instead of a soda he gets just like a piece of paper you know that that says soda and the everything starts to erode and here we go seeing like you know bits of the game like random graphics of the game just kind of thrown in here so we're talking about the creation of a game you know and th the logical continuity that's necessary when you're making a game and then what happens if you have errors bugs and glitches to an extent like this, but it's part of the game, which is, you know, just so hilarious. I really like that instructional video, um, and I want this forklift pretty badly. But let's see, can I use the phone? I can't. I can't plug it back in. And let's look around. It just says stop, 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 stop. Danger, <laughs> danger everywhere. Sure, there's the exit, but it's, it's not the exit. Um, it says... Please, I'm begging, right? Uh, and there's just kind of random objects protruding. So let's go here. And then now we get back into a reasonable area where things are constructed in a way that, as the video said, quote, makes sense, right? This makes sense. And, but it makes sense in the, the absolute worst way, you know, that this is what humans have done with reality is create structures like this to spend our time in. 